in the last lecture we had a theoretical understanding of jwt and its use now before we go ahead and generate jwt in our application first let's add some environment variables for jwt and create a jwt specific configuration file so let's go to vs code and the first thing which we are going to do is in the env.development file inside this environment variable file we are going to specify some jwt specific environment variables so first of all i am going to create a variable jwt underscore token underscore secret okay and to this we are going to assign some string value and that i'll do later after that we also want jwt underscore token underscore expires in and to this we are going to specify a time in seconds so for that i'll say 3600 seconds that means one hour and this variable we are going to use to specify after how much time the jwt will expire so in our application whenever a jwt will be generated its expiration time will be one hour so after one hour that jwt will be invalid it will expire then we are also going to have some more configuration so for example jwt token underscore audience now this variable it is not that important but still i am going to keep it here so here the audience will be basically who is the audience of our application so basically the url for which the jwt token is issued so here i'm going to specify localhost 3000 because this is the url on which our application is currently running then next we are also going to have jwt underscore token underscore issuer and this issuer also is going to be our application domain so again it is going to be localhost colon 3000 so this is the domain currently on which our application is running so these are the four environment variables we need for specifying the configuration for jwt let's save the changes in this env.development file now what we are also going to do is we are going to create an auth module specific configuration to store configuration related to jwt and for that let's go to the source folder and inside this auth folder we already have this this config folder in this config folder currently we have auth config.ts okay inside this currently i'm storing this secret key but this we created just for understanding how we can create module specific configuration so here what i'm going to do is i'm going to change this configuration so here i'm going to have a secret property and this secret property i want to assign with jwt underscore token underscore secret then i'm going to have another property called expires in and this again let me copy this process.env so this expires in property i want to assign it with the value stored for jwt token expires in okay let me save the changes here and let's quickly check if that is the environment variable name so i'll simply copy it from here and i'll paste it here just to avoid any errors then we are also going to have this audience property and to this i'm going to assign the value stored in this environment variable so again i'll copy process.env and here i want to use this environment variable jwt token audience so i'll replace it here and finally i also want to have this issuer property and to this again i'll use process.env and on that i will access this jwt token issuer environment variable and this is it this is our auth configuration let me save the changes and if i go to auth module.ts there we are already adding this auth config so since we have added this auth config using this config module for feature now we should be able to inject this auth config in any file inside this auth module and we are already doing it inside this auth service so if i scroll up here you see we are already injecting this auth configuration so using this auth configuration we can read all these properties of this auth config 
and that we will do in our next lecture. Now finally, in order to generate JWT, we need a package provided by NestJS and that is NestJS JWT package. So let me go ahead and let me open VS Code built-in terminal. Here, let me clear the terminal and now let's write npm install command. And what do we want to install? We want to install at nestjs slash jwt. So this is the package which we want to install. If you want to install a specific version of this package, you can also specify the version after this at symbol. But here I'm going to install the latest version. Let's press enter and let's wait for this installation to complete. So as you can see, that package has been installed and to confirm that, let's scroll down and let's open package.json file and in there we have this nestjs slash jwt package and the version of this package is 11.0.0 one more thing which we want to do here is remember that this expires in it is going to be a numeric value but since we are reading it from this env file there it will be read as a string value so here I am going to convert that string value to integer type using parse int method. Okay, like this. So this parse int, it will convert the string value, in this case, this 3600 into an integer. And here, let's also specify that if this expires in property is not defined in the environment variable, then by default, it should use 3600. And again, I'm specifying it as string because this parse int method, it will parse the integer value from this string. And here, let's also specify the base, base 10. Okay, so this 3600, this string should be converted to integer value in base 10. Let's save the changes. Let's go back to authmodule.ts file. Let me close this terminal here. Now here you see what we are doing is to this for feature method of this config module we are passing this auth config and inside this auth config we have all the jwt related configuration now since we have installed nestjs slash jwt here i am going to write an import statement and i want to import jwt module from nestjs slash jwt and what i want to do here is on this jwt module I'm going to call a method register async and to this register async method we are again going to pass auth config and on that I'm going to call as provider now what this method will do is it will help you avoid write any extra boilerplate code so for example if I right click on this and if we go to definition so here you will see that it is ultimately returning the same boiler code that we would have used in order to inject a module using use factory. So this is again one of those instances in SJS where you use a boilerplate code and it ensures that this JWT module, it gets injected into your application or the module successfully. So instead of writing all this by ourselves it will be taken care by this as provider method okay so this is all i wanted to cover in this lecture in this lecture we created the required environment variables we created or actually we updated this auth config.ts file where we have specified some configuration some settings for jwt which we are going to use in our next lecture and we are also adding this auth config in this auth module and we are registering it as provider okay so now we should be able to use this auth config in any file inside this auth module so let's save the changes here let's quickly check if we have any error by going to the terminal so here we have an error and it says that secret key is required so we have this validation error because if i go to vs code and if we go to env.development from here we have removed that secret key environment variable so if i scroll up here we have this config folder and let's go to app config.ts so here we are specifying this node environment 
and here we have this env.validation.ts file and in there we are saying that secret key is required so i'm going to remove this or instead i'm going to say jwt underscore token underscore secret this is required okay because we need this secret key in order to generate jwt and that's why it is required with this if i go back to the terminal we should not have that error so we have changed the validation so application is building successfully now all right so in the next lecture we are going to work on generating a jwt and we are going to send it in the login response this is all from this lecture if you have any questions from this lecture then feel free to ask it thank you for listening and have a great day